So um, thank you very much for the opportunity to, um, uh, to take part this morning. Um, what I want to do is to try and bring a little bit of um, uh, context around the UK experience of working um, through institutional partnerships. And um, the first thing I'll, I'll, I'll say is um, uh, that we... Right, just making sure I got the tech right. Um, so this, this was actually... Some, this, this is copy, copyright me. Um, uh, I was at a, um, uh, a side event at the World Health Assembly a couple of years ago, and people were talking about public-private partnerships, and I kind of thought well, there's something strange about what they're saying. Is they're saying, is, is it saying this as if everything is sort of formulaic, that if you tick these boxes, you've got a partnership. And at the end of the session, I, I kind of couldn't resist um, saying something like this. And I said, partnership for me is a mindset. Uh, it's not a formula. And it's, uh, it's about relationships and not systems. And then um, this was in my early, um, early days with Twitter. And suddenly found that this was being retweeted around Geneva. And I thought, wow, I've really made it now. <laughs> and, um, but uh, uh, if you take nothing else away from, from my talk today, um, please take this. Uh, it is partnership is a mindset. It's not about ticking boxes, um, and it's not a formula. And it is about, as Pap said earlier, it is about uh, relationships, and it's not about systems. So a little bit about um, THET and who we are. We are uh, the Tropical Health and Education Trust, but we're known as THET. We're a specialist global health organisation that educates, trains, and supports health workers through partnerships, helping to support health systems and enabling people in low and middle income countries to access essential and good quality health care. And again, just to um, set a bit of context for us, we talk about health partnerships. That's our shorthand for um, institutional health partnerships. And uh, so what, what for us is a health partnership? Well, it's a, a model for improving health and health services based on ideas of co-development. That's really important. Um, between actors and institutions from different countries. The partnerships are long-term and are based on ideas of reciprocal learning and mutual benefits. Now, in the UK, um, we've been working uh, with... We're actually 30 years old next year as an organisation, and these ideas around co-development and partnership have been at the heart of what we do. And uh, going back into so 2011, the UK government... Um, uh, funded a program called the Health Partnership Scheme, uh, which uh, was valued at uh, somewhere around £33 million. I can never, these days, I can't translate that into other, any other country, uh, currency because it changes every day. Um, about $40 million, uh, I guess, something like that. And the, the idea behind the Health Partnership Scheme was to see what happened if you took this institutional partnership idea, which was using volunteers from the UK health sector, uh, so health professionals who had no international development experience but did have a wealth of professional experience, what would happen if you gave them the opportunity to work within a framework which enabled them to partner with institutions, their, their, um, uh, their e equal institutions in other countries in low and middle income settings? What would happen? if you began to inject some money into that um, and uh, to, to see what happens if it scales up. And at the end of the, uh, the, the main phase of the Health Partnership Scheme back in June this year, um, the programme had trained 84,000 health workers in 34 countries using 2,000 volunteers from the UK health sector. Um, we had um, 184 projects which we funded. So we were funding, through this programme, we were funding the partnerships to do their activities. I often say to people, SET actually doesn't do anything. Um, we, we simply facilitate partnerships to do what they, uh, they, they put forward as their, um, their projects. And so um, because of that, we work across um, a number of different health themes, um, uh, accident emergencies, you can see them all there, blood supply, HIV, mental health, um, we, we took out the one that said other, um, because that sort of, um, uh, so there is a, a, another one which would normally say other, which is all the things that don't fit into those categories. But because partnerships are generally speaking founded around relationships which start around a particular theme, 
Um, what we didn't want to do was be pr particularly prescriptive about what health themes should be addressed by those partnerships because the partnerships already existed focusing on maternal and child health or ophthalmology or pathology or whatever it might be. And, uh, and so we worked across those, those areas. And I'm glad that Pap talked about primary care as well because um, most, of the, most of the traditional partnerships have been built up between hospital and hospital. Uh, but increasingly, we are seeing projects emerge which address issues around primary care, um, community health workers looking to streamline, for instance, referral pathways uh, from the community through to uh, the central referral hospital, for instance. So a combination of um, primary care, public health um, and uh, tertiary care. And then during our time... Um, uh, working with these partnerships, we we tried to identify what are the things that really make partnerships work, and we came up with um, our partnership principles of partnership. And, and um, uh, you may not be able to see them all there, but we're talking about um, a circle which talks about um, partnerships being strategic, uh, being harmonised and aligned, effective and sustainable, and so on and so forth. <laughs> And if you really want to dig into this, if you go to our website, which is very easy, it's thet.org, look for the principles of partnership. Um, you will find there's a very interactive um, section there which looks at those eight domains. Then each, in each domain looks at the hallmarks of uh, what, what makes uh, good performance in those areas. And then uh, those hallmarks lead to a set of resources that you can you can uh, review. So do have a look at that. My colleague Graham, who's over there, just wave your hand, Graham, um, is in very much very much the architect of this piece of work. So um, do go and grab him at um, at coffee time and and talk to him. But this word partnership, <coughs> um, I, I get very uh, as you have seen earlier, I get very upset about the way people talk about partnership. And if you remember back in uh, uh, was it 2005, the Paris Declaration on Aid Effectiveness suddenly started talking about partnership. And um, this is a commentary that someone uh, made uh, at that time, uh, or a little bit later rather, and said, such has been the popularity of this approach to partnerships in development that donors began to use the term widely in their mission statements and project proposals, often as a surrogate for participation. They even adopted the term for themselves, donors, becoming development partners in a semantic sidestep that obscured the underlying and continuing imbalance of power. And that's what we, we need to, uh, to, to challenge. I've just been given the, uh, uh, the, the, was it two minutes? Uh, another five minutes. Right, okay, yeah, good. Um, so the, um, this is what we found from, uh, from the evaluation that DFID did of the health partnership scheme. Um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this later in the session on evaluation. But the evaluation findings overwhelmingly demonstrated the effectiveness of the partnership and volunteering <coughs> approach in supporting health worker capacity strengthening. The health partnership scheme has been successful in strengthening partnerships and project approaches so that there are more chances of sustainability and wide scale change. But how does it work in practice? Using healthcare professionals from the NHS who have absolutely no exposure to the issues of working in low resource settings, well out of their comfort zone and experience, might sound like a crazy way to tackle the global health worker crisis, but it works, it really does work. And the, the, the evaluation said uh, what, what, we've, uh, what I've just put up there. So why does it work? How can it possibly work? How can we take a midwife from a sleepy town in mid Wales and give her the tools to address problems of maternal mortality in eastern Uganda or the highlands of Ethiopia? How can a biomedical engineer whose daily routine is maintaining high-tech equipment in a London hospital uh, transfer his skills so that a biomedical technician in northern Zambia can be better equipped to keep the most basic equipment on the maternity ward working? It doesn't make sense, but it does. When people hear of the basic struggles of health workers in some of the most resource-poor resource -poor settings in the world, they are, crucially, given the means to do something about it, and they rise to the challenge. Sure, there may be a sense of, uh, of adventure, of going into the unknown, of feeling that what I can do goes beyond sending a text to donate to a telethon, 
But the reality is that over 2,000 uh, uh, folk from the NHS have done just that. You may say that's okay for those who can take the time off or have no commitments at home to think about, uh, but increasingly we're seeing people giving their time in their lunch break or at the weekend or in the evenings to support or mentor their counterparts overseas. Sometimes we look at what seems to be an intractable problem and we despair of ever making a difference. Of course, one or two midwives working in eastern Uganda are not going to make a dent on the maternal mortality rates of the whole country. <laughs> But what if their work is successful? What if other people notice and decide to replicate that model elsewhere? What if there were a way of capturing all the work happening in a particular country and looking at op opportunities to replicate it or scale up? Suddenly, the capacity for systemic change becomes a possibility. And it all started with a midwife with an interest, not even at that point a vision, in a sleepy town in mid Wales. Well, I think actually that is my time up, um, but you'll have more of me later if you can bear it. Thank you very much.